Hello and welcome to this quick review of periodic trends. This clip is designed to be watched as always after you've already done some work on the topic because it's designed to support what you've already been thinking about. So we'll keep focused on changes of state in period 2 and period 3. So throughout the clip we'll use this graph to illustrate the trend and the reasons behind it. A line between neon and sodium can be used to mark the boundary between period 2 and period 3. But when we're looking at individual cases, I'll remove this label so that um, we can use the space to illustrate a bit further um, what's going on. So looking at the, um, the highlighted elements, lithium to beryllium and sodium magnesium to aluminium, you can see there's an increase in boiling point. There's an increasing charge on the metal ion as you go from left to right which gives an increased electrostatic attraction between delocalized electrons and metal cations. And the structure type is called giant metallic. And all these examples, boron, carbon and silicon, are what we call a giant covalent structure. This means many strong covalent bonds are present which require energy to break. And the period 2 elements experience less shielding, so electrostatic attraction between nuclei and bonded electrons is stronger. So here we're talking about boron and carbon as opposed to silicon. So focusing on carbon, uh, one of the allotropes of carbon is called graphene, that's the most um, up-to-date one. Uh, it consists of sheets of carbon atoms covalently bonded. It's one atom thick, very strong and electrically conductive. So graphene is used in microscale conductors and many new applications in high strength nanotechnology. So another um, giant covalent structure that carbon forms is graphite. It's also a conductor. So with graphite there are three covalent bonds per carbon atom, but the fourth electron forms London forces between layers. This makes the fourth electron delocalized and therefore it can carry charge, making graphite electrically conductive. But graphite still has a high melting point due to many strong covalent bonds requiring energy to break. And as you'd expect, the bond angles are 120 degrees around the carbon atoms. It gives it a trigonal plane shape and the sheets slide over each other easily. And the London forces are not physically strong, so the sheets can move in opposite directions. So diamond, in comparison, has all four electrons in each carbon atom engaged in covalent bonding. So in the diagram, only some of the atoms are shown for illustration. So diamond is very strong because, again, there's many strong covalent bonds requiring energy to break, but no electrical conductivity this time because there's no delocalized electrons available to carry charge. The elements highlighted now, nitrogen, oxygen and, and fluorine, then phosphorus, sulfur and fluorine, are called simple covalent structures. So the lattice is held together by weak London forces. So it's London forces that are broken during melting and boiling, not covalent bonds. As a result, this requires less energy to achieve. So focusing on phosphorus, sulphur and chlorine, uh, there's more electrons in the period 3 elements, so their London forces are greater and stronger, so their boiling points are a little bit higher. But it's useful to have a look at phosphorus, uh, sulphur and chlorine in another way. Why are they slightly different to each other? So the P4 molecule has four phosphorus atoms covalently bonded. So this means the P4 molecule has stronger London forces due to the greater molecular size. So sulphur has eight atoms in its molecule. So this means more electrons and therefore stronger London forces than those found in phosphorus. And as you know, chlorine has two atoms in its molecule. So this obviously means less electrons, so its London forces in the solid state are much weaker, so therefore much less energy required uh, to break them. So we have giant metallic structures, giant covalent structures, and simple covalent structures. So it's the structure which determines a substance's boiling point. And only in giant covalent structures are covalent bonds actually broken during the boiling and 
melting processes. So hopefully this has been a useful quick one um, just to take you through um, how to, to explain the differences in boiling points across the periods. Very important not to get uh, simple covalent structures mixed up. And perhaps the last uh, bit of advice or the one tip I could pass on here <clears throat> is to never say that covalent bonds are broken when simple covalent structures melt. It's the London forces breaking. This is possibly the most common mistake that people make in exam questions and they throw their marks away by saying this. So please make sure you remember this when you go into long answer exam questions. So once again, thanks for your time and until next time, see you soon.